On July 27, 1999, Barry Sanders ended his 10-year NFL career by releasing a fax to the Wichita Eagle newspaper. This is the first time he has publicly read these words. Shortly after the end of last season, I felt that I probably would not return. I also felt that I should take as much time as possible and make sure that my feelings were back with conviction. Today, I officially declare my departure from the NFL. It was a wonderful experience to play in the NFL, and I have no regrets. I leave on good terms with everyone in the organization. The reason I'm retiring is simple. My desire to exit the game is greater than my desire to remain in it. I have searched my heart through and through and feel comfortable with this decision. You're going to be a football player when you go away. Today is the best day of your life. Believe it. He might be the finest quarterback produced in the last 10 years. He is a man like That's all I need. Fortunately for me, I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose my job. Football convinced me that life is a team game. Rest of your life. Nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it. I live, breathe, and bleed Detroit. And my dad's been season ticket holder since I was a kid, and uh, you know it was tough going to those games for a lot of years. It was brutal being a Lions fan. So, but I will say this: that, that Barry Sanders. I mean, that was what kept people coming for a lot of years. So if there's football fans out there that never got to see Barry uh, Sanders, you know, play the game of football live, it's, it, there's no way to explain it. You can watch the highlights and stuff, but still, just being there where you get the perspective of the whole field and. You know, watch plays developing and, uh, and see the way that guy just cut and juke people. It's just it's insane. He's off to the races! You can't ask a person in Detroit, what's your favorite run of Barry? Because that would say that, you know, that was just a handful and you can remember one. This guy did something special, you know, every single Sunday. Barry again, off the right side, breaks one tackle to the 40, fights free, he's on his way! Sometimes you just gotta look to the heavens and say, wow! When God created Barry Sanders, even he didn't know what he made. When I look at players like um, Jim Brown, at one time he was the, one of the biggest guys on the field. I think he would be different in today's game. Barry Sanders is a guy that no matter what year, you can say 1920 and you can say 2012, he will still be best running back in the NFL any given time. There was one person in Barry Sanders' life who did not think he was the best running back of all time. First, I want to say hello to the greatest running back that ever lived, the number one running back who ever lived. He's not with us today. I think he's with his family in Los Angeles, G Mr. Jim Brown. So I want to say hello to him, Jim. I was supposed to have a 30-second 30, a 30 speech. I'm going to make it quick. And now I want to introduce you to the third best running back that ever lived, Barry Sanders. I'm not your friend. I'm your father. It's a statement William Sanders repeatedly told his children. He was a hard-working man who could publicly be Barry Sanders' biggest critic and privately his biggest supporter. Growing up and trying to understand, you know, why is he as hard as he is? Why is he so hard on us? There, there's no doubt about his, his, his motivation. I understand, you know, it was love. Life for the Sanders family was in Wichita, Kansas in a small home that Barry shared with his 10 brothers and sisters. I never felt that it was that cramped. You know, either I was in my room or I was outside playing. Look at Look at Look at this track. I think everyone. <laughs> Certainly, he was a, a, a serious football fan, a passionate football fan, and a lot of my love uh, for the game uh, definitely comes from him. They got some linebackers probably there. They probably can't outrun me. What about yeah. LeVon Kirkland of Pittsburgh? Well, he's about 265. He could not run me. He couldn't get you? 
I, I doubt it. Willie would express his opinion, and you just learned to take it. Uh, of course, I got to know Mrs. Sanders, Shirley, and what a sweet lady. There I figured out where Barry got his grounding from was Shirley Sanders. At Wichita North High, the varsity coach, Bob Shepler, thought Barry was not tough enough to play running back. So he played Barry at cornerback. I'm not, I'm not talking about Coach Shepler at North High, but... Uh, he, he, did, he, didn't, he didn't play him right. He didn't think Barry would ever be a great running back. He wouldn't play Barry running back. And he would just lose it. He would be like, you know, GD, you know, these crazy coaches. You, should be, you, you need to be running back, you know. They got, they got these, you know, kids that can't run out of sight in a day. And, you know, he was going off on me. And I was just, you know, it's like, what did I do? And what I remember about that year most is that I was really just concerned not where I, you know, that I was playing out of position or anything like that. I was just concerned that I hadn't received any letters to go to college. And I was thinking, man, this is my junior year and I haven't received, I haven't received anything from anybody. You know, what am I going to do? At the start of the summer, going into my senior year, you know, I go, go to my dad and was kind of explaining to him that, you know, I really need to concentrate on working out this summer and getting ready to try to earn a scholarship. And uh, he just looked at me like he always would, you know, no nonsense, and said, well, hey, son, you're working out. is going to be working with me this summer. At that point, it was understood that, you know, when he needed me to work, that's, that's what I did. The only thing is, you know, the pay, the pay wasn't that great. <laughs> but he, but, but um, in the end, it did pay off. Entering his senior year, Barry got a new coach and a new position. Sanders averaged over 10 yards a carry for the season. I had heard a, a comment from previous coaches that, yeah, he just wouldn't stick it up in there. That did not bother me, uh, and his running style was fine with me because guess what? Nobody could tackle him. You know, I was always at the game on Friday night. You know, I was that kid that was always here um, with my dad, um, and so now, um, after so many things that happened, I'm the starting running back at North High School. And not only that, but I'm having a career year at running back. I, I cannot even explain it to you. And for me, just being on the field, playing the game, that was where I was at home. That's, that's, uh, that's you know, really all I wanted to do. Last game of season, we were winning and we against Wichita East, and we knew we were going to make it to the playoffs. It was me and another kid that year that was pretty much battling it out um, for the city rushing title. Came off the field and I called him over and, and I asked him, I said, Barry, uh, I can keep you in and you can rack up some yards, we can try to get that title, or I can put the young kids in, what do you want to do? He said, Coach, let the young kids play. There wasn't a second of hesitation from that young man, let the young kids play. At that point, because of all the great things that had happened for me, just um, was not that important. Just a few months after worrying he would never get a recruitment letter, Barry Sanders had two offers. One was from Tulsa. The other was from Oklahoma State, who already had an All-American running back in sophomore Thurman Thomas. William Sanders wanted his son to go to Tulsa and play right away. I, I love the fact that Thurman was there. You know, I, I thought it was kind of kind of cool that there was a guy that had had all that success and now I get to go to school with him and, you know, I mean, for me, so my mind was somewhere totally different. Barry chose Oklahoma State against his father's wishes. That was one of the most difficult days of my life at that point. My, he was not excited about me going to Oklahoma State. The morning that Oklahoma State came to sign me, coach came to the house before uh, school. Dad walks to the front door, coach tries to shake his hand, he, he wouldn't shake his hand. He walks out of the house and says, I think he's making a mistake. And he walks out. And I, I was so hurt and confused, um, but, but I knew for me that was, that was the right thing to do. I, you know, and that was probably the, the first time in my life I'd ever, um, you know, went against his wishes or what have you. But, uh, you know, it, it was just a very difficult day for me. William was also a huge fan of the University of Oklahoma, a conference rival of Oklahoma State. For my dad, I took the position that, hey, look, you know, I was an Oklahoma Sooner fan well before you were born. I'll always be one. Um, long before you're gone from Oklahoma State, that's my team. 
In his first two seasons at Oklahoma State, Barry did not start, but excelled on special teams. In 1987, he led the NCAA in kick return average. It was my senior year. We were playing, getting ready to play the University of Oklahoma. And Barry Switzer, who's the head coach at University of Oklahoma, says, whatever you do, don't hurt Thurman. I was like, ah, oh, okay. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. I said, you don't want to play against this freshman back that they have named Barry Sanders. Well, I'd never heard of Barry Sanders. I said, we have a tough enough time with Thurman, but you won't ever touch this kid. It was tremendously flattering because, you know, there, there's no guy that my dad held in higher esteem than Barry Switzer. I didn't think I was the guy, you know, to start at that point. Thurman had had a great career. He was well on his way to the pros. And I knew that when he left, that I would be given an opportunity. Tomorrow night, Oklahoma State kicks off the 1988 football season. The big question in Stillwater, can kick returning wizard Barry Sanders replace All-American Thurman Thomas in the backfield? Take a good look. 30, 40 years from now, the people are going to be asking, have you ever seen Barry Sanders play? Barry Sanders to midfield. He might go. And doesn't Dad love it? it? It didn't take long for William to get on the bandwagon real quick. Sanders had arguably the greatest collegiate season ever, setting 34 records. He rushed for 2,628 yards and scored 39 touchdowns in 11 games. I would call, I had the number to the field, on the field, because they didn't televise a lot of the games back then, so I would call and Harvard saying, well, he got about 300 yards, he got about four touchdowns. Barry Sanders from the one yard line, he's going in. I'm the kid that remembers all the great college running backs that I study as a kid. So for me to find myself in that position, it, it was unreal. There were journalists waiting for him on the practice field and that there were people there who wanted to represent him as a professional. He was really uncomfortable with this. He wanted to go and play football. He really enjoyed college life and he just wasn't ready for this kind of intrusion. I think people uh, take this game too serious, you know, and, and uh, the hype and everything, it's just, they, they make you seem as if you're different than everyone else, and that's the main thing that I don't like about it. Sanders was a Heisman candidate, but his team was scheduled to play in Tokyo on the day of the announcement. Live via satellite, Sanders watched the ceremony. The 1988 winner of the Heisman Award is Barry Sanders. He felt like he wasn't worthy, but he had to go along with it. He won the thing, and he knew winning it would bring more attention, more media scrutiny, more media, and that's not what he wanted. I don't, I don't, Barry don't, Barry don't want it. If he, if he wants it, he wants it for his father, because he know how I feel about him and my, and my friends back home in Wichita. But, I, but for himself, I don't, I don't think, I don't think he care about it for himself. Barry's Heisman Trophy still sits in William and Shirley's house, behind his father's souvenir Oklahoma helmet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like at this time to introduce to you uh, one of the finest running backs in the United States of America and our number one pick, Barry Sanders. It's really good to be here in Detroit. I feel it's a privilege to be one of the players that will, will uh, help restore the roar in the dome. Pitch out to Barry, left side, hole, 35, 40, Barry on the run to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, look out, 30, they'll never catch him, see you later, touchdown, Lions, Barry Sanders, 68 yards. The Lions needed a franchise player, they needed a brand, and Barry had that flash, he had that ability to light a place up. It's a draw to Barry across midfield, 45, he's in the open, 40, 30, he's on. Sanders. 
We had a chance to get to the playoffs because we had Barry Sanders, the absolute X factor of any football team that could bring you from the depths of despair to the height of joy in one carry. 219 yards on 22 carries, four touchdowns. What an afternoon for Barry Sanders. He called me two times early in his career. Once, he called me, he was a coach, and I had a good game. He said I ran for 224 yards. Soon after that, I got another call, and I wasn't sure what he was talking about, but he did say, uh, Coach, pray for me. And I, and I knew that that media and all that attention, it was wearing on him. Barry Sanders, congratulations to you. You picked a great time to have one of your best games of the year, national uh, television on Thanksgiving Day. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank God, and I'd, I'd say hi to my, my family back home in Wichita, Kansas. Okay, Barry, thanks thank very you, much. Barry, Thanksgiving Day yeah. continues on NBC. One of the things I, I realized in my first couple years was that the game is so different, the life is so different. And sometimes, you know, if you're not careful, you can really get lost in all the other things going on. Barry Sanders' newfound status as an NFL star conflicted with his small town persona. That was Barry. He wasn't the one that really said, okay, here's all the, the cameras and all those things. Go there because you're going to be more visible and more seen. Uh, he would shy away from that a little bit more. Uh, with Barry, he more or less wanted to have it happen naturally. He wanted to know the kids in the neighborhood. There you go. You, can you catch? Can you catch, Jake? He wanted to meet the people in his community. Okay, all right. You guys doing any work? I don't see any sweat out here, man. What are you guys doing? Oh, man, what are you doing to pack your shirt on? What's up with that? What's up, guys? That's something. If you know anything about his character now, the humility that he has. How's going, man? You know, you don't do things to, you know, to try to get recognized for doing something great. You do it because you really enjoy it and, and you love it and, and you like it, but you don't have to make such a big deal out of it. Well, I think his job spoke for itself. Draw play to Barry. Got room 30, 35, 40. If you make an amazing run, score a touchdown of 80 yards, you make eight people miss on one play. Do you really need to spike the ball? And the Lions have struck again. Whenever Barry scored, he always knew where the referee was. Boy, what a great change of pace to see one of the greatest players in the game go into the end zone and act like he'd been there before. That's part of the job. This is what I do. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn around and humbly run back to the sideline. Barry is not a rah-rah a kind of a guy. He's not a guy that's out there. He's not a guy that's going to talk a whole lot, <laughs> unlike myself. <laughs> What's up, Bill? What's up, crew? What's up, baby? Boys, game, Bill. That's for y'all, baby. Some saw Emmett Smith as Sanders' equal. In 1991, the two met in the NFC Divisional Playoff. It mattered that I was playing against Emmett. He had certainly made a name for himself at that point, and I certainly wanted to uh, put my best foot forward. Barry Sanders, by the way, the Cowboys said we can't let him beat us. They haven't done that, but they're losing 14-6. Sanders has eight yards, four carry. What do you have to do? Do you want to get Barry Sanders into the game, or they're giving you the pass? Right? Oh, we like to get Barry into the game anytime. Uh... So we go in the locker room at halftime, and I said, Barry, do you feel uh, badly that you're not touching the ball here? He goes, Coach, we're winning the game. Knowing Sanders, I was like saying to myself, it's not enough. No matter what you do, it's never enough. It could be calm right now, and a storm can happen in the next five minutes. Got it away to Barry off the right. Barry to the 45, and Bumps to the 40, breaks it, 35, 30, he's gone! Unbelievable! Touchdown, Lions, Barry Sanders! Oh my gosh, what a run! Caught a little crease, the power was stuck, he paused for a second, then went back to his left. Tony can see it's kind of like overran the play. And Tony was standing around trying to look for like, which way did he go, which way did he go? He's behind you, Tony. 
I was sitting like saying to myself, he made them like straight up fools. <laughs> I'll tell you what, every time we talk about Barry, we say that's the greatest run, that's the greatest run. That might have been the greatest run. That was unbelievable. The touchdown sealed Detroit's first postseason victory since 1957. It was the first and last playoff win of Barry Sanders' career. You know, we talked about, we talked about um, how much I loved the game as a kid. Just the, the, the time I spent fantasizing about football um, and just dreaming up things that I wanted to do on the field. Certain times I almost felt like I could do anything uh, with the ball. Able so well to read, you know, the body language of, you know, of the defender. You know, and you almost have him on a string, you know? You almost have him on a string. And as I sort of grew into being a running back, there's a certain almost familiarity with it. And so those are the crazy things that I would think about and dream about. Following their victory over the Cowboys in the 1991 playoffs, Barry Sanders and the Lions were on the brink of Detroit's first ever Super Bowl appearance. You thought it was going to be better. It was really disappointing. You thought they were going to go out there and really play. Redskins absolutely pounced on them and made it a runaway. And we just get it handed to us. There's such a finality to those playoff games. While they are much more special than regular season games, they hurt a lot more. See the shot of Barry Sanders sitting there. That's a shot of a competitor. Something bad has happened to him and he can't do anything about it. A very disappointing ending. They are going to lose again. For Barry Sanders, everybody was talking about, will he be the next 2,000-yard run? That is his lowest rushing total ever. In 1995, Sanders and the Lions suffered their fourth straight playoff defeat. After a 5-11 record the following season, the front office was forced to act. If you haven't gotten yourself to the Super Bowl, uh, there's an empty feeling inside. And I can tell you from, from this very moment on uh, that that's going to be the direction and the goal of our football program uh, here with the Detroit Lions. I played for Coach Ross at University of Maryland for three years. I knew whatever we did was going to be successful under his leadership. And, you know, there was a little frustration from some people why are we putting the fullback in the backfield, putting more people in the box when we have the explosive running back. What is the, the basic problems with the system right now? The, the, the bad offense they're running them out of. In fact, there's no, it's, it's, it's a non-existent offense. I think his dad had some differences with me primarily between the one back and the two back. Barry needs spaces to run, and he can't. He can't. He can't have those spaces out of a power eye because where the defense is set up to play you. You've got to use wide receivers, preferably four wide receivers, spread the spread the defense out. The start of the '97 season was it was frustrating. It was difficult for us. After two games, Barry had a total of 53 yards. I remember after the first two weeks of that season, just saying, oh, you know, what, what is going on here? We got off to a slow start, and we weren't using him enough. I mean, there's no question about that. We needed to use him more. The Lions knew that he was their guy, and they got him the opportunity to do his thing in space, which is a smart thing. 
And that's why 2,000 yards was a possibility. Barry Sanders cut back over the middle. Got free to the 25, 30. He's off to the races. 40 midfield. 40. It's a foot race to the 30. He slowed up but keeps going to the 10, 5, and touchdown. 80 yards. Barry went on a streak of 14 consecutive games with 100 plus yards. Folks, he's the best in the business. Someday you'll be able to say, I saw the best running back in football ever. I'm pretty sure. Early in the season, no one imagined I, I, that, that would be the year. That's really tough to get 2,000 yards. I had come close a few years prior where I was only 100 and some yards away. I wanted it, but I realized that it is, it's really tough. Sanders entered the final game of the regular season, needing 131 yards to reach the milestone. At halftime, he had 111 yards to go. had the patience of my mom and I always felt like you know the next one could be the one The 53-yard run assured Detroit a playoff berth as Sanders became only the third running back to break the 2,000-yard barrier. Congratulations to you, Barry. It didn't seem as though after the first three quarters you were going to have a chance at 2,000. Well, we've, we've developed into a really uh, patient offense. And, uh, but for Barry's father, William, but I just needed to focus on the historic Barry. accomplishment um, you know, did nothing to change the status of his son. And uh, if that means blocking and catching, uh, running right. I just want to tell you that Barry Sanders is better than Jim Brown. Well, them guys don't know. I know football, too. <laughs> <laughs> and most people, and most people agree with me. They just, they just, most, most people don't want to, no critic, no, no criticism. So they'll, they'll go along. William Sanders and I hung out a lot. You know, he had that thing about who's the best runner, you know, is Jim Brown or, or his son, you know. Mr. Sanders, what, what does that mean to you from your son? Jocko, believe me, I, I don't feel good for me. I feel good for the, for the city of Detroit because this means they can go on another day. They can, they can go to another playoff game. William, he didn't really praise his son that much. Very good. Congrats, folks. Congratulations. Fantastic. Very proud for you. He was happy, but he didn't want to brag. Congratulations, B. Right, he said, I let everyone else talk about Barry Sanders. All right, thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. Downtown Detroit, they had a big mural of him on one of the buildings and just signified, you know, how big he was in this city. You play this game to win Super Bowls. And once you had a taste of the playoff and you feel like the organization is not moving in that direction and you are the guy and you're risking your neck, your body, your mind, and you feel like they're not putting out the same kind of effort and you're losing, it's not fun. And once you start picking out a guy's love for the game, you lost them. There was probably some players that I thought it was a big mistake to get rid of. At the time, it was, and while I played, it was definitely something that hurt. Those personnel decisions that were made as a, a group organizational decision, they were tough. I understand Barry may be frustrated. I was frustrated. One year after eclipsing the 2,000-yard mark, Barry Sanders entered week 17, knowing that it might be the final game of his career. Over the next few years, it looked like we would probably be rebuilding, and, and uh, we had gotten rid of some really good players. and just felt like it was time to make a change. A disappointing season for Barry Sanders and the Detroit Lions. I knew going into that game that was pretty much it. And so I remember after the game, I just broke down. You know, I didn't really say what was going on. You know, I was I was glad to get out of there. 
the feeling I had through all of it was that he would be back. Uh, but that didn't happen. You know, I, I struggled with it. I struggled with it all offseason um, and really just kind of waited to the last minute. He called and said, I'm thinking of finally doing it. I'm, I'm going to retire. He issued the statement, which was released through Wichita Eagle newspaper. Pretty much called the Lions day before training camp, let them know. Um, and then afterwards, uh, for the next couple weeks, uh, got on a plane, went to, went to London, um, hung out for a little bit. Ironic, Barry Sanders' father thinks Jim Brown is the greatest running back of all time. 34 years ago, Brown retired suddenly in the prime of his career. Ditto Barry Sanders, the only man who's ever gained 1,000 yards, 10 straight seasons, will retire Wednesday, not with the press conference, but with a statement, and Barry will not be available for comments. Sometimes when people retire, it's, it's almost an opportunity for their close-up, and Barry wanted to exit, you know, stage right, and he went all the way to London. Sanders less than 1,500 yards shy of breaking Peyton's career rushing record. So barring injury, this was really just a matter of time before the record was Barry's. As he left town, it became speculation on why he retired. Uh, rumors. N none of them ever coming from Barry. People said, well, he didn't want to break uh, Walter Payton's record. I don't know if that's true or not. I understood full well who Walter Payton was, what he had accomplished. Not just Walter Payton, but all the guys that had, that had tried to do what Walter did. You know, the record for me wasn't important enough to, to force myself to stay around and, and to try to get the record. I heard that Miami basically had a deal worked out where they, it was going to be almost like another Herschel Walker type of deal. They wanted Barry. The Lions told him that either you're going to play for us or you're not going to play for anybody. No, no. I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't hate the Lions, um, and um, and I, I was. I wasn't trying to go anywhere else. There are a lot of conspiracy theories, and I think people sometimes we really like conspiracy theories, but in this instance, I don't think there are. You know, ha had things been different with the team, I, I don't know if I would have made the same decision. Had we been coming off a, a Super Bowl victory um, or a deep run into the playoffs, I, I don't know. I just felt like I had run out of steam. At that 10th year, I just felt like that was my time. That was it. I, I had had enough. I had played the game long enough. Um, and that, that, that real drive and determination and enjoyment of the game had, had left. You had a lot of people that were mad at Barry. Why, why I never understood that. We're talking about Barry and uh, his reputation, whether it's ruined for good in this town. I've got an email right here that says, until yesterday, OJ was my least favorite NFL runner, but he only stabbed two people in the back. I would have rather he'd been truthful up front, and he could have kept his respect and his dignity. There were, there were guys who definitely were upset that he had left, and there were some guys who felt like uh, he, he had left the team hanging. I would like to say it doesn't hurt, and it doesn't bother us, but how can you ignore it? you know, Barry being gone, and you want to have high hopes and say you'd like to achieve greatness, but it's a huge hole missing. It's not just any running back, it's Barry. For him to give it 10 glorious years, the years that he gave that game, you know, to me, I mean, how could you be mad at the person for walking away? As players and media and people, when was the right time for him to do it? It's Barry. Barry don't want a big retirement party. He don't want to be on ESPN and ABC and all that stuff. I have answered a lot of questions about, about my retirement, but as someone who is a football fan, I'm pretty sure that I would have been disappointed as a fan had uh, Tony Dorsett retired uh, in his prime. You know, I may have even shed some tears. And Emmett Smith has now passed Barry Sanders into second place on the NFL's all-time rushing list. Well, Barry and I, it was never really one of those things, I'm better than you, you better than me, and I'm better than you. I rush him. No, 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 no. We were friends. I, wa I watched Emmett. I watched Emmett break the record. I wasn't very surprised that he would get it. Emmett Smith has eclipsed Walter Payton as the NFL's all-time rushing leader. Uh, there's no doubt. 
in any of our minds that Barry would have been the all-time leading rusher. When you look at when Emmett Smith ended up getting that honor, a lot of people looked at it and said, well, it's kind of an asterisk beside it. You got it because Barry no longer wanted to play. Otherwise, Barry would be the guy holding that crown. If Barry would have played 15 years, that record could have been 25,000 yards. And, uh, and, and, and Emmett always said, yeah, I'm glad he retired. We wouldn't even be talking about Emmett. Emmett would be in second place. There's no way. That record would have been so far out there. We knew that. I think Emmett knows that. That's why they still have the debates in the, in, in the bars. It's not enough. No matter what you do, it's never enough. And no matter what you do, people are going to talk about you, regardless, whether it's positive or negative. Bottom line is, what I've done, I've done. And there's nothing we can do to go back and change it. I'm 43 years old. I'm not trying to get back in the uniform, and neither is Barry Sanders. So all the wish thinking and all that kind of stuff, it's over. Let it go. For me, I'm in a special class in that category that's played this game. And knowing what I know and seeing what I've seen, for me, that, that's very fulfilling. And uh, that's fulfilling enough to be satisfied with where I sit, uh, with wherever, wherever history wants, wants to put me. And I'm not going to argue with them. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 years of professional football, Barry Sanders earned more praise from his father for walking away from the game than he ever did by running with the football. God, I'm so proud of him. Because it, it takes guts to have done what he did last night, not today. Because to every guy would not have done it. The average football player would have been trying to set records and trying to hang on uh, to the end. And he walked away at the height of his career. And that really takes guts. Today I officially declare my departure from the NFL. The reason I'm retiring is simple. My desire to exit the game is greater than my desire to remain in it. I have searched my heart through and through and feel comfortable with this decision. Barry Sanders, when he says, no, I was just done and I knew it, I believe him completely and fully. And Barry stayed here, made his home here. And I think that that is what brought all the fans back. And when Barry walks out on that field, when they do alumni day, he gets the biggest cheer. Today, Detroit once again celebrates its adopted son. The young, humble boy from Wichita, one of 11 children, now has four sons of his own. He's done a nice job of kind of blending his parents and the way that he raises his kids. A lot of us didn't have our dad in the home. Mr. Sanders was in the home, and that was, that was a big deal and stayed there and worked hard and was a dutiful father and if Barry was at a game or whatever, he was there. And I see that in Barry. From the stands, Barry Sanders has watched his oldest son follow a familiar path with a familiar name. As a high school running back, Barry James Sanders became a top college prospect. You know, I'm just a proud parent. He's done a great job. And like his father Barry once did, B.J. Sanders was forced to weigh his football future with family in mind. And here is Sanders right up the middle, has a seed and has a West touchdown. Big contingent here standing with Barry Sanders as he gets ready to make this big decision. Alabama. Stanford, of course, Oklahoma State, where your dad was such a star, and then Florida State. So, Barry Sanders, where are you going to play your college football? He could care less, you know, where I went. I mean, he knew that I would make the, you know, right decision. We've always had a strong relationship, and I think just relationships, I mean, that's uh, all you can ask for from a father is to have, um, you know, just a relationship where you can, you know, talk to him and, you know, ask him questions and, you know, him just tell you stories and you just, you know, learn from, you know, what he has to tell you. I've told BJ this before. 
I don't know if he'll be the type of player that I was because I don't think he'll have the type of dad that I had. You know, I'm going to do um, you know, the best I can as a father, um, but I, I am not the man that my dad was. And I do remember my dad telling a story, I guess he used to return punts and I guess in high school and he, he didn't like returning them. I guess he would let them bounce in front of him or he, you know, he wouldn't catch them um, you know, out of the air. After the game on the ride home, my dad asked me, uh, why, didn't, why weren't you catch, catching the punts? I was like, well, daddy, I, I, it was a close game and I didn't want to run up and drop the punt um, and cause us to lose the game. My grandpa Sanders, I guess, told him, you know, you can't play this game with, you know, fear of failure. You just got to, you know, let the chips fall where they may. And especially in the game of football, you are going to make some mistakes. You know, a lot of times I, I did lose yards on a run, but it wasn't for lack of trying. And I can, I can credit William Sanders for, um, for that great lesson that allowed me to be a great, um, great player and to be here today. What he said about Jim Brown, I was never offended. My dad was always the biggest supporter. I, I don't believe I'd be here without him. He'd always hear people say their child is the best, you know, and he didn't want to, he didn't want to ever just do that just because. I think he felt like Barry knew how much he loved him and what he really thought about his talent and ability. You know, a lot of people think that he liked uh, Jim Brown better than he liked his son, but that's not true. He was very proud of his son. Mr. Sanders, he was not the hugging and I love you, Dad, but I think Barry felt it. And in the instruction that he gave Barry and the teaching that he gave Barry, I think the older Barry gets, the more he gets insight into how much his dad loved him. As a, as a dad who's very proud of his son, what do you, what do you wish for him in the coming months? I wish all my sons would get married and have two or three kids. I think a man do need two or three kids to be whole. So that's what's important, not football. That's, that, that's, that's what's important to me. Yeah. I'm trying to be the best parent I possibly can be. He wants all of his kids um, to raise his grandkids, uh, you know, uh, the best way they can. You know, so he, he would be proud.